What's going on guys? It's Sean Dionk here and today I want to cover a few terms that you may be unsure about. The four terms we'll be covering today, as you may be able to tell from the title, is Capital Growth, Equity, LVR and LMI. These terms are thrown around quite heavily in the property space and they kind of rely on each other to calculate. Firstly, capital growth is the value increase of your property over time. Capital standing for the asset, or in this case, the property, and growth is pretty self-explanatory. So, say we purchased a house three years ago for $500,000, and today it's now valued at $600,000. We can calculate our capital growth by calculating the difference between these two numbers, being $100,000. This amount is often put in the same context as equity, where you might hear someone say something along the lines of, We've just gained an additional $100,000 of equity in our property, which is definitely true, but it should not be confused with the total amount of equity in your property. Equity is essentially the total amount that you own of your property. To calculate the total amount of equity in your property, you take the current market value of the property and minus the amount outstanding that you owe a lender. Using the same example as before, let's say you originally borrowed $400,000 from the bank to buy the property, and over that same three year period, you had paid down the debt to $380,000. So in this scenario, we would use the current market value of $600,000 and minus the amount outstanding, which is $380,000, giving us a total equity calculation of $220,000 for this specific property. This leads us to LVR, also known as loan to value ratio. Breaking this down, it's essentially the percentage of our loan in comparison to the total property value. So we're using the same two figures here as equity, but calculating it as a percentage instead of using that straight value. Taking our existing numbers, we can calculate our LVR by taking our amount outstanding at $380,000 that we owe still as a mortgage, and divide that by our total property value of $600,000, and times that number by 100 giving us a 63.3% loan to value ratio. Now, let's go back to when we first purchased the property three years ago and calculate our LVR back then. So our initial mortgage was $400,000 and our property value was $500,000, giving us a loan to value ratio of 80%. So we can see over time as the value of our property increases or our debt decreases, our loan to value ratio as a percentage starts to come down. Up until this point, we've covered three of the four topics which were essential to understand before we delve into the last one. But just before we get into it, if you're loving this content and have already found it valuable, don't forget to smash that like button. Our final term is LMI, which stands for Lenders Mortgage Insurance. Now, this is commonly confused as being insurance for you in the worst case scenario that you can't pay your mortgage repayments. But in actual fact, this is insurance for the lender for that exact same scenario that we actually have to pay for. Typically, loans greater than an 80% LVR trigger lenders mortgage insurance, except for in the case where a government grant or policy allows you to borrow a higher than an 80% LVR. This threshold is put in place because it's much riskier for the banks to loan out on a higher than an 80% LVR. For example, if you had to sell the property due to unforeseen circumstances in a low property market, with an 80% LVR, they have a 20% buffer of the property price to ensure that the outstanding loan gets paid out in full once the property has been sold. Going back three years ago to our $500,000 property, remember we purchased it on an 80% LVR, so we didn't have to pay lenders mortgage insurance meaning we used a 20% deposit of $100,000 to secure that property, which at that point in time, it was also our total equity amount. So in the worst case scenario of a falling property market, if we had to sell it at a quick sale of say $450,000, meaning we actually lost money on the property, which does happen, the banks will use $400,000 first to pay off their outstanding loan. And then you're left with a measly $50,000 at the end. However, now imagine if we had purchased that same property on a 95% LVR, and the total loan on that property to begin with was $475,000. In the same scenario of selling the property at $450,000, we would now be short $25,000 to pay the bank back in full. And this is essentially the shortfall that lender's mortgage insurance covers. Calculating a lender's mortgage insurance premium is different in every state. So to calculate it, I would highly recommend asking your mortgage broker or using an online calculator to do so. 
For a rough guide, you can use this table here to gauge how much you might be up for. LMI is a one-off payment typically due when you settle on your loan, which can also go towards your total loan amount, meaning you are increasing the debt by the LMI premium and you have to pay interest on that additional amount if you choose to put it against the loan. I'll be doing more videos like this, giving a high-level explanation of specific terms and putting them in together with other related terms to give them some more context and explain what they actually mean. Do you have some other terms that you would like me to explain? Leave them down in the comment section below. As always, seek your own professional financial, legal, taxation and property investing advice for your current situation. These videos are just my opinion and are general in nature and should never be considered as personal advice. If you're keen for more content, make sure you subscribe and smash that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And until next time, happy house hunting.